Welcome to the Bullet Pro Podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell-Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Hope everyone is having a great week. It's a Thursday, so happy Friday, Junior, as we like to call it here. Um, so I hope that, I hope you all are having a good um, a good month, right? Like the months are just flying by. We're almost at the end of 2023 and I'm like where did the time go I've said this probably to so many people that um I can remember February (laughs) it's like it was February and then it was June and then now it's like almost at the end of the year like already so anyhow all right um today I'm really excited to have a conversation about um escaping the cycle um the cycle of like overcoming uh negative thinking and reclaiming your power as it relates to your body and I'm really excited to have my guest today who is Rachel Levin she is a body love educator author and speaker and also the owner of Rachel Lavin Wellness. Um, Rachel has published her first book here recently, The Donut Diaries. Um, Like I said, she's a published speaker, a professional speaker, sorry, um, a body love coach, certified health coach, and certified personal trainer. Uh, She grew up in Northern California and has lived in Hawaii, Vancouver, Washington, Portland, Oregon, and also New York City. Um, She currently resides in Greenville, South Carolina with her partner. She's not too far away from me, but she's also lived in some pretty fantastic places as well. So we are going to talk all about, um, you know, just how to um, pour in more genuinely to your body, uh, to how to learn to trust your body more. We do talk a lot about body and body love and body confidence um, and body uh, positivity, all the things body here. You know, I talk a lot about, um, you know, my body, I'm not afraid to say, um, you know, sometimes I go in the mirror and I'm like, oh, who are you? Um, But, you know, the important thing is to love your body where you are today. Um, and to um, thank your body um, as I try to, even when I'm not feeling so great in the body, I always try to make sure that I'm able to thank my body just for holding up, for supporting me um, and for for it loving me, even if I don't seem to love it in that day. So stay tuned. I'll be right back with Rachel. Welcome back to the Bullet Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra, and thank you all for joining. I'm really excited to welcome in a body love educator, author, and speaker, Rachel Lavin. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, thank you. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. Saturday, so. <laughs> and the first day of fall. Woo! This is, yes, like, why, yes, let's definitely applaud that. As a person who does not like the summer, I'm so excited that we are finally transitioning, but I feel like I'm being set up. I live in Atlanta in Georgia, and I feel like I'm being set up for like, you know, the fail because all this past week, it's been in the 50, like the high 50s at night, and then like pretty much in the, like 78, like all week. And I'm like, okay, yes, yes, please. Thank you. I can wear a light sweater. I can walk outside, not pass out from humidity. But (laughs) I tell you, Rachel, I feel like I'm being set up for like 90s. (laughs) Well, I'm here in South Carolina, so I'm right there with you. And of course, you know that like in a couple of weeks, we are going to have that Indian summer, that 90 degrees. But Then it'll go away for a few months for sure. So. Right. Yeah. I always say that, you know, I just sort of dress for the day, right? Like yeah. it's just whatever whatever it is, but there is a difference. And I I my home has been decorated for fall since September 1st. So <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and this weekend I'm like, I'm baking pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. Like we're going all in for the fall. <laughs> Yes. Yum. I've already awesome. had a pumpkin scone. Like I'm ready to. Yes. I feel like you and I could talk about this. All right. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> all right, it's all good. All right. So why don't we get started with you telling anyone out there listening or watching who you are and what you do? 
Of course. Thank you so much. Well, I have been a female in the fitness industry in all aspects for over 20 years. And in the past few years, I've written my book. I've kind of shifted into, you mentioned, body love education. And by sharing my story, I'm hoping to inspire other women to understand that there's a difference out there in the lies you've been told that you have to eat lettuce to stay in a smaller body as opposed to move your body, eat foods that make you feel good. It's okay to rest your body. So I'm trying to change the narrative. I'm doing my best. And I know there's a ton of other amazing women out there trying to do the same thing too. So I'm just out here inspiring women to live your best life and take care of your body, love your body, but stop dieting. Stop thinking that everything that goes in your mouth is going to change the shape of your body and you're not going to be lovable. So that's what I'm, I'm out here doing. I love that. I love that. And I, I think, oh, you said so many good things just then. Um, and I know we'll dive into more, but just the one thing I want to just call out is that stop thinking that because you eat one thing, it's going to like change like, oh, tomorrow, if I, if I decide I want to eat the the cupcake tomorrow, I'm going to be like, I'm going to gain 10 pounds, you know, or it's yeah. Like, so that's so important. Okay. So let's start with talking about the inspiration behind, let's talk about the why. So there's two, two whys I'd like for you to touch on is really, you know, like you said, why did you go more into this lane? Why, why is it important for you? But then also you wrote a book called the donut diaries. And I'd love for you to talk more about um, the inspiration behind the book and, um, and some of the key messages. Of course. Well, this is such a personal journey for me because it was my life. It is my life. I am a woman who has gained and lost weight throughout my lifetime more times than honestly I've ever really put a number on. And I've been a size zero and I've been a size 12 and probably higher. I just have never been able to until recently to put the two pieces or three pieces for me together, which is you got to stop dieting because dieting only sends your body into more turmoil and to more chaos. And it just doesn't know what to do other than to protect me and you from starving to death. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where the plateauing comes from when you stop losing weight, that's where the weight gain comes from because it's so confused. So this journey is so personal for me. I lived it. I still live it in the sense of I have to still be conscious of telling my body, you're okay. I love you. You're, you're going through a healing journey right now and to be kind to myself. So when I decided that I really could not fathom another 40 years of restrictive dieting and thinking about my body every second of every day. I wrote a book called The Donut Diaries in which I share my struggles and my journey and how I came out at the time, the other side of beginning my journey of completely stopping dieting. So it's my first book and I'm hoping to inspire other women with my message. Yeah. Well, I, first of all, I, say thank you so much for your tran the transparency because I think that there are probably so many people listening and watching us right now who um have struggled or may be struggling with the same thing. When you said that you've lost weight more than up and down more times than you put a number on, I was like, yes, girl. Because I mean I was thinking about that maybe um a week ago where I was saying to myself, I was like, oh my God, by the time like I was pretty much like I don't know, like, I think I've always fluctuated, like, all my life, just when you're younger, it makes sense, because you're, like, you know, your body's just way different when you're younger, but when I got into my 30s, um, then it was like, I was always just up and down, I'm in my 40s now, up and down, up and down, and all, and something you said was really important is that you have to give yourself grace, you have to speak positively to your body because all if all your body ever hears is 
when you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I can't believe I gained that weight back. Or I can't believe, like, I can't believe I've got this fat roll. You know, if that's right. all you ever speak into your body or the negative, you know, self-talk, I mean, it is like, yeah, your body's going to be like, but you have to thank your body for just sustaining and just for holding me together. <laughs> you right. know, thank you, thank you, body, for carrying me today, you know, um, because, but it's important, I think, for people to understand that, especially as like you evolve in your life, I mean, your body changes and you have to figure out. I love that you said, you know, you have to stop like dieting, you have to stop. You have to stop putting yourself on crash diets to lose X amount of pounds. Or I know there's a lot of stuff on TV, like everywhere you look, everywhere online, there's something telling you, if you just do this thing, <laughs> if you just do this thing, you'll lose like, you know, weight. But it's like you said, it's about developing like the healthy relationship and the relationship that allows uh, you to have um, for you to want to be the best version and to become a stronger body, but also the the version that gives yourself grace. Because mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of people aren't like, you know, they're not, they're not given, they're not giving themselves um, that grace uh, these days because you see so, you know, you see so much. We live in a time where, you know, you just open up your phone, you know, you open up any app. And people are going to immediately say, well, I don't look this way. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, this, this is such a big, big conversation. And I know like with our time today, we can only touch on just so much, right? But mm -hmm. I think that it's important to have this conversation because even still today in 2023, you're right. You just look anywhere outside your home and there's some diet or some program telling you, you can be thin and beautiful and happy as long as you're this big. Mm -hmm. And that is the lie that we have as women, mm -hmm. men too, but as women, we have been fed since birth. And if we can start to, as a woman, as a society of, of women, can start to literally dismantle that lie. Mm -hmm. I believe in with all my heart that we can all be happy and accepting and kinder, not only to ourselves, but to each other. Yes. 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 I, yeah. And I, I'm right there with you, but I think it's because we have people like you who are doing the work, who are having the conversations, who are there to help people along the journey. I mean, I think like we will always get to being in a better place because like it only takes there could just be there could be five people who take something really meaningful from hearing your voice in your story and um take that away and it could be like a game changer for them so definitely uh you know you keep you keep you keep the good fight going my friend <laughs> i will even on days where it's like am I doing the right thing? But, you know, being able to have conversations with another amazing woman like you, I, I, I believe, I believe I am. Yes, for sure. I mean, I, I, cause I think even just like when people, you, sometimes you don't think about it. Like, no, you may not sit around, like you may not be someone sitting around all day thinking about like your weight. You might not be, but there mm -hmm. are moments there are moments like, I mean, I can be like upstairs, you know, saying, oh yeah, let me go down. And you can catch that glimpse in the mirror. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you're like, wait, 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 who's, wait, whose body is this? <laughs> I was like, wait, uh -oh. who, who, wait, is this, is this you girl? <laughs> but you can see that and it's okay. It's okay to acknowledge it. It's okay to acknowledge that it's like, Oh yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. That happened. Um, cause I can tell you, I pr pretty much like a lot of people, right. Those pandemic pounds that were like knocking <laughs> pandemic pounds that came and I was like, wait, who, who's, who's, whose stomach line is that? Who's where that, where that come from? And then also, you know, and then I started working from home, like just full time, like I'm at home now. And I noticed there's a difference. Like I work out, I move every day. I, you know, um, but 
What I think I had to discover over the last three, four years is that my body wasn't the same as it was when I was like three years ago. Mm -hmm. Like it had changed and there were just some things that like, okay, that I couldn't do anymore that, you know, or things that may, foods that may have triggered my body differently than, you know, when I was like, oh yeah, I could eat all the candy. Well, guess what? You can't eat all the candy. So, (laughs) and it's just kind of taken like, um, I think it's like acknowledging that, you know, okay, I don't like this. Um, I want to be better. And then figuring out the right way to do better. Mm -hmm. And often the right way is a longer journey. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's not going to happen overnight. Like, (laughs) go to not go to sleep and wake up and be like, oh, wow, look at that. That rule's gone. Fantastic, (laughs) y'all. But I have just like, I'd rather do it slow and steady and um, in the, the, the right way, in the healthy way, as opposed to just like trying to like, do fat diets. If if you don't mind, I'd love to just kind of jump on what you're saying because there's two pieces of what you're saying that are so valuable that your listeners may not even understand or have ever even thought about. But our body weight, if you're a person who weighs yourself on the scale and you freak out every time that number changes, that number changes throughout the day. Mm-hmm. I promise you, I promise you wait. I, I don't, I hate the scale. I don't own one anymore. I just, <laughs> I'm not promoting it, but I guess yeah. so you could get a visual. It's like step on the scale first thing in the morning, then yes. do it after you eat something, then do it after you poop and then do it after you go, yeah. to, or you go to bed. I guarantee you will get four different numbers. Exactly. In one day. Yes. And drink so, water. If you right. drink water, you will definitely see like a number, a different number too. Like, so sorry. Your, no, please. I mean, I love having a conversation. So the fact that you're putting so much stock in that number is ludicrous. And the fact that, you know, people say things all the time, like, oh, I'm aging. So my metabolism, no, no, no. Your eight, your body is aging. Yes. Does your weight fluctuate when you age? Does your activity level change when you age? Yes. But your metabolism, unless you literally do nothing, your metabolism knows what to do. It works. It's how it burns energy. So that is another friggin' lie that we have been dealt. And we were like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. No, it doesn't <laughs> because our bodies are so intelligent. And they, okay, my best example is this. Do you ever, 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 ever have to tell your body, I have to go to the bathroom? Absolutely not. Why do you think you have to regulate it when it tells you you're hungry or you're tired or you're not, your body is so intelligent and so smart that we have literally forgotten how to trust our bodies. I like it. I like that. And thanks for sharing that because those are two things that people, I think people don't, uh, people do say about the metabolism and definitely the scale, like the scale in the morning or like whatever, weighing yourself. Like, yes, I agree. Cause it wasn't until like, I got really, um, focused on drinking, like the appropriate amounts of water for my body, like every day that mm-hmm. I, and then I, you know, was like, I think I remember like I had a doctor's appointment or something. I drank a lot of water and I went and got on the skull. I was like, wait, wait, what happened there? What, what happened here? And then she was like, what have you done today? Have you eaten? I was like, well, I drank a lot of water this morning, like after my workout. And she was like, oh, well, I mean, you know, your body, like it's water, like <laughs> you drink yeah. a lot of water. So I think it's, yeah, those simple um, things like just being able Able to recognize that really helps, I believe. All right, let's talk about you talk about movement um, being magic. I do. Tell us about that. I think it's so important because still, again, 2023, I still hear people say, I hate to exercise. Okay, <laughs> well, you've put some kind of, I mean, my question, my next question is always why? Somebody made you feel a certain way about it. Mm -hmm. It hurts when you do it. Like, let's get into that because you are literally doing the one thing that your body was created to do was move. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that because in every decade, there's a fad diet, so there's also a fad workout, right? So there's mm-hmm. something being shoved down your throat. And I 100% agree with our bodies don't like to do the same things. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. That's why there are so many different ways to move your body. There's dancing, there's swimming, there's walking, there's strength training. I, if you said, Hey, let's go do one of those Ironman. Hell no. (laughs) Like, no, I'm not crawling through mud. I'm not getting ticks. I'm not doing it. But if you said, let's go to the gym and strength train, I'd be like, yes. Mm -hmm. So you have to try a few things to figure out what makes your body feel good. There is no reason why you should literally not be able to move for an entire week after one workout. Being sore is okay, of course, Mm -hmm. but being literally disabled because you have worked out too hard or you've done something that your body just doesn't appreciate. You have to try a few different things. That's my best, best, best advice. And find something that when you walk away from me, like, oh, I feel good. I feel energized. Mm-hmm. You know, not everybody sweats, right? So mm-hmm. you can't use that as a barometer of a good workout. You have to start to pay attention to your body. So that's why I say movement is magic all the time, because you can find something that you will fall in love with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like that you encourage people to try different things because, you know, what works for one person may not work for you and you have to be okay. Um, Like, like you said, there's so many things out there to try to do. Um, And I'm right there with you. I'll never do Ironman competition. (laughs) I applaud, I applaud all the people that I know that can do it. I'm like, that is fantastic. But guess what? No, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, but like, but yeah, if you let me do strength training from Peloton or you let me ride my bike or something like that, then I'm all for that. Or, you know, or like a dance, like a Zumba, something like that, all in. <laughs> and there are, and there are just, you have to find the thing that works for you. And I'm also glad you called out that if you don't leave it drenched in sweat, it doesn't mean that it wasn't a good workout. Correct. Because I know, and I think some people feel like, well, if I don't leave and I'm not, my clothes aren't like sticking to me, then that means I didn't do anything. But sometimes, I mean, like I know a lot of times, like when I like lift, like I don't always, not always sweating. I mean, right. you know, I'm just like, it just feels good. Like after I'm like, wow, like that felt good. Got, got the juice of going, the arms are going to feel good tomorrow. You know, I <laughs> think it feels great. Absolutely. You don't know how many times and mostly women, actually, I'm going to be honest, all women in my years and years and years of teaching classes, I'm not sweating. I'm not working hard enough. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, you are. Just keep going. Keep going. (laughs) I'm much more, I'm much more, uh, I've spoken about things like that now. Back in my early career, I'd always be like, oh, well, you know, now I'm just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, let's talk about how do you define uh, body love? Well, that's a beautiful question. And I love being asked it because, you know, we hear words being thrown around, especially now body positivity, body neutrality. Great. Whatever you associate with appreciating the body you're in right now, great. Mm -hmm. But if you don't love yourself, you will never love your body. And Mm -hmm. I can tell you this from the absolute perspective of I was a 40 year old woman turning 40, a size zero. I finally reached my perfect, I'm using air quotes, body. And I was miserable. I was miserable. I still had no idea who I was. I still had no idea how to feel comfortable in my own skin because I didn't have a good relationship with myself. And until I got there, I don't care how much I weigh now, what my body looks like to another person. I love me. And that way I treat my body with love and kindness and I take care of my body. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a very, very distinctive difference. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more with you because I do, I think it's important that you called that out and um, thank you again for that, because, you know, saying that if you thought I was going to get to this size, my ideal size, and I was going to be happy, but you got there and still found that, like you said, because you didn't love yourself, that there, there was no way you could, you could be happy in that body because you still had the same issues that you hadn't dealt with before. Um, right. So I, I love that you called that out because um, we here at Glow Up Girl, we do like talking about, you know, people, you know, getting the necessary like coaching, helping therapy, whatever you need to heal on the healing journey, um, because that is important, um, you know, because I think a lot of times people are like, if I could just drop these last 15 pounds, if I could just get these 15 pounds off, then everything's going to be good. But the net net is, is that if you're living your life based on like 15 pounds, then that immediately really says like there's something more mm -hmm. because if you loved like you said if you truly loved yourself then yeah you'd have the 15 pounds and yeah you want to get it off if you thought like ah yeah just health wise I want to get that 15 off but that doesn't stop me from like being who I am and right. loving me at every like at every stage so <laughs> Or every phase. So that's why, like earlier when I said, like, yeah, I've been like you, I've been different sizes. Um, you know, I've been different versions of me, but the 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 root of it is that at each of those sizes, like Kyra loved Kyra. And it was just a different version. <laughs> it was just a different version of me that I got to love like differently than the other version, or it was like the evolution. So I like that. I like, I like that. that too. I love that for you. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about trusting, trusting our bodies. And um, what does that look like? Well, we touched on it before and your body gives you signals, right? We, I mm -hmm. use some, a, a, a perfect example. I have to go to the bathroom. That mm -hmm. is my body telling me I have to go pee. My stomach growls. That's my body telling me I have to eat. I can't keep my eyes open. That is my body telling me, go to bed. Go to sleep. You know, so lots of things, you know, and, and anxiety and things like that. Are, are, is your body telling you something? Or pain is a way that your body tells you this right here, you pulled something. It needs attention. Mm -hmm. it, your body is so, so smart and tells you what it needs every second of every day. And so the one thing we've learned as human beings is to ignore our hunger. And to me, and I did it for a hundred years, so I get it. But now that I don't, it just is so fascinating that that is something that we've learned how to do. So I, with my work, I really try to bring my people back to those signals. And I use the word trusting your body because you really don't need to do anything to survive, to live. If you mm -hmm. listen to your body, I'm yeah. hungry, eat, I'm tired, sleep. I have to pee, pee. Like if you just let your body do what it needs to do, pay attention and follow its instructions, mm -hmm. you literally don't ever have to think about anything. <laughs> so I really am hoping to kind of like drive that message and point that out. Yes, it's going to take some work to reestablish a relationship with yourself, especially mm -hmm. if you are a woman of our age, 50s, 40s, and you've been ignoring it for your most of your life to your whole life, then it is going to take some time. And you are going to want to second guess it. Oh, I'm not really hungry. I don't know. I don't need to eat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I think <laughs> I think also to something you said um, earlier as well about listening to your body and trusting it is also the re the rest. Um, and as it relates to like working out, because I think a lot of times when we start working out, we tell ourselves like I gotta go hard for like I go hard for seven days in a row. Like if I'm not working out seven days in a row, then I'm not you know I'm not doing it. But it's being okay with like when your body tells you like, you know what, today, let's take today off. 
Like, and I used to be like, I used to go, nope, I got to do it. I got to, I, I got to at least work out six days a week because if I'm not working out six days a week, but then, you know, I got to a place to where like, if I'm during the week, if my body says, you know what, Kyra, like, we don't feel like doing this this morning. There have been a lot of times I've gotten all the way to my workout room and gone in the room, got ready to get on the bike. And my body was not today. Like, Let's take a break. Let's have a rest day. Let's do it tomorrow. And it's important to hear that because I know in the past I would have pushed through and I would have just like made myself do it. And I wouldn't, it wouldn't have felt great. Like it, what it doesn't, whenever I find, like I get it. Cause I know there are people probably saying like, yeah, but a lot of times you don't want to work out and you have to push through. <laughs> but I think there's a difference. There's a difference in, you know, just like, I don't really want to work, <laughs> work out or your body saying, I think we need a break today. Let's not push ourselves too far. I love, love, love that you pointed that out because you're right. There are so many people who believe that same school of thought. Oh, just do it. Just do it. Exercise is cumulative, right? If you are consistent through your entire life, and that's why when someone comes to me, it's like, I got to lose 50 pounds for a wedding in, in Antigua. In what, two weeks? (laughs) <laughs> like, come on, lady. And but if you've been exercising consistently for your whole life, you don't have to do that to yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. And I love what you said, because there's days where I have had a client walk in and she's like, I just can't do this today. And I listen. I don't I've never been that kind of trainer that says, oh, come on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, OK. Do you want to stretch a little bit? Do you want to go have coffee? Do you want to go home? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And I hear you. And I love that you made that, um, you know, example for your own self and you listen to yourself. And I really wish that people would do that more because you're right. There's a difference between saying, I don't want to work out. And it's like a week later, as opposed to one day, Mm -hmm. one day. There's nothing wrong with taking a day off. I actually look forward to my days off. And if I wake up in that space, I'm like, well, I can do uh, something else. I can go take a walk. I, I can go swimming mm-hmm. or I can go shopping. Like there, there's so many <laughs> other things to yeah. do than see the inside of a gym six days a week. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, people, it's okay to rest. It's okay to take a day off. You are actually doing your body a service by mm-hmm. resting. And your next workout, I guarantee you, you're going to be stronger. You're going to have more energy. You're going to want to do it. If you allow yourself to have those rest days. Yes. So, okay. So now, so let's talk about this. So before you get to a place to where you have more of that comfort and you have that confidence and being able to say, yes, I'm going to take the rest day. Now, before you, your mindset gets to that place, you may experience, right, some negative thinking or self-sabotage of saying, I mean, you better work out. You need to go work out. I mean, if you don't work out, then you're going to eat today and those pounds are going to be on tomorrow. So what are some of the ways that we can work to remove that negative thinking and self-sabotage? You have to find a way that you remind yourself that your thoughts are just that it's a thought and it does not have to be your truth. Let it go. Let it start to get in the habit of it's a thought. It's a thought. And thinking is really our detriment. If we, uh, I'm sure there's lots of self subscribed or prescribed, whatever the correct term is overthinkers out there. You can stop that. You, it's a conscious effort, but you can stop that. And I think it's so important to acknowledge what am I trying to accomplish here? Am I trying to lose five pounds in two minutes or do I want to work out and eat right and move my body and just be happy for the rest of my life? And if the latter is your answer, then you have to be open to doing things a little differently. And I get it. I know that self-talk is crucial. Is cru- critical. It's mean, it's nasty, and it's really hard to understand that it's just a thought I'm having. 
-hmm. But by bringing my consciousness to it and thinking about what I want for Rachel is not what my head is telling me. I hope this all makes sense. It, mm -hmm. It's just, it's a process. It's a process. Yeah. And I think that, like you mentioned, I love that you said it's not an overnight thing. It takes some time. But for me, what worked best was saying kind things to myself mm -hmm. out loud. You're okay today. Your body is perfect today. I love mm -hmm. my body today. Or even I like you today. Whatever you need to do to get yourself over that like hump. Yes. Yes. I I'm the I agree with you. And I think also too, writing it down. Like I'm I'm real big on like putting sticky notes with affirmations in places, but just reminding yourself because I think sometimes being able to see it written. Um, so say it out loud. Like you said, every time that negative, uh, I call it the mean girl, every time the mean girl says something, then you combat that with a positive affirmation of like, no, you are a lie. I know that, you know, my body is, I'm, my body is strong. I'm healthy. I, you know, like whatever you need to say. And like you said, it does, it's not going to happen overnight. It, but it's going to happen and it's and it's almost going to be a, a time where you're not even going to notice that it you know that it immediately changed because you're going to be so inconsistent with like telling yourself how great you are and how wonderful you are and how I'm pouring into you that you'll forget that the negative thoughts like when they pop up they immediately go away I love that you pointed that out because I think so many people when you say write down a positive mantra, affirmation, self, positive self-talk, whatever word you want to use, people get so hung up on words. You have to understand that there is no way you're going to believe what you're saying for some time. And when you said one day, you're going to say it out loud and you are going to believe it and it's mm -hmm. all worth it. So people who are out there rolling your eyes at your hot pink sticky notes, <laughs> they work. They work. I still use them. <laughs> yes, for sure. All right. Uh, Rachel, why don't you tell everybody out there how they can work with you and how they can connect to you and get the book? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Rachel Lavin Wellness on social media. My website is rachellavinwellness.com. My book is on Amazon, The Donut Diaries. Just be mindful that I spell my donut with a U-G-H. And yes, please reach out, find me on social. I'm always, always, always open to chatting about this. I love it. So, and I'm really hoping to inspire you and other women to believe that you can be happy. You don't have to restrict. I do not sell a diet. I do not sell a workout. I'm just here to support you along your journey. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we will also drop all the links in our show notes as well. So you can get to them um, easily. All right. So now we are going to move into three things with Rachel. I'm going to ask you three questions um, that will help the audience get to know you a little bit better. Um, okay. And I'd love to say that I'm going to start out with three. And the first one is a two-parter. So you get a one <laughs> A and a one B. So tell oh everyone how you start your day and how you end the day. I start my day every morning by just waking up, opening my eyes and just saying, thank you. I have found that when I start my day with gratitude, it just has been a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. And I know it might sound a little cheesy, but in all honesty, I kind of end my day with that. Awesome. No, I love it. Um, all right. Number two, what's a, if you're a goal or intention setter, um, what's one thing you set for yourself this year? And if you don't mind sharing, where are you with the goal or intention? Thank you. I, I'm new to Greenville, South Carolina. And when I moved here, I wanted to really be a part of a community. I mm -hmm. haven't felt like that in a long time. And so I wanted to make some new girlfriends. I wanted to start doing things with said girlfriends. And I wanted to start forming relationships with women in the community. And mm -hmm. I will say that all my goals are not a hundred percent, but they are definitely making progress. I have some lovely ladies that I get to call friends and some beautiful, beautiful businesses and some women that I've joined forces with here in Greenville. So I'm happy about that. Awesome. I love that. 
And alas, uh, what is what's a book, a podcast, a show, or anything that is inspiring you in this moment? Well, I found this book about 10 years ago, and I read it every year. And I even have it on audiobook. So when I'm feeling a little discombobulated, I listen to it. It is called The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. That book is so beautiful. It's simple. It's very, it's very thin. It's a quick, easy read, but it's the most powerful book I've ever read. And the fact that I, it calls to me, like when I'm feeling, you know, like I'm not making progress or I'm questioning myself, it just really, really brings me back to center. I love it. And I highly recommend it to anyone. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, Rachel, I've enjoyed our chat today. (laughs) Uh, I want to thank you so much for just the transparency and openness about your own journey um, and what you've done to get to where you are today and for the tips that you've shared with the audience today. Well, thank you. For, so, oh, excuse me. Thank you so much for having me. I love being here with you. <laughs> awesome. Well, before I let you go, I'm going to ask you to leave the audience with three things you'd like them to take away from our discussion today. Absolutely. I would love you to say thank you to your body. I would love you to, if there's one food that you tell yourself, I can't eat it, think about why. And the third thing I would love you to do is take a look at yourself in the mirror. And if you can't say, I love you, that's okay. Say, I like you, or I can stand you, or you're all right. (laughs) Just say something, (laughs) say something nice to your whole being. Yes. Awesome. Love those. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Um, You can always come back here and share with us in the future. Love it. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Bold Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra. All right. I want to thank Rachel for a wonderful discussion today. Um, Lots of great nuggets. Um, First of all, I just really want to thank her for the transparency. She's uh, really awesome and love. I feel like whenever you get a person who is really willing to be honest about like where they've been, where they are, and maybe what they're still struggling with today, like, you know, you're getting like the real from someone. So I really appreciate um, that conversation with her. So check out the show notes if you want to learn more about Rachel and how you can work with her about her book or just about um, her journey and connect to her um, on social media as well. If you want to learn more about Glow Up Girl, you can go to glowupgirl.com. You can check out our past podcast episodes. You can also sign up to be a guest on the show if you are interested. You can check out resources and so much more. Also, make sure you're checking out our career series where that is where I get to talk about um, my career journey somewhat and also answer some of your questions about um, things in your career that you might need help with. So I really also love doing that aside from these amazing episodes that I get to do with um, with the guests. Um, so head over um, if you're in the podcast platform now, just click back, look for the career series. You can find those episodes and also you can check them out. If you want to watch us, if you're not watching on YouTube, you can head over to our YouTube channel and you can see, um, see these live and you, you, you don't want to miss all my hand movements. I mean, I'm a person that talks very much with their hands, so they're always going <laughs> and you get to see me, you get to see me go from put my glasses on because I really can't see to try and take my glasses off and then maybe looking anytime you see my eyes like squinting you're probably gonna say put your glasses on Kyra yes um so also if you're on a platform where you can leave us a review feel free to do that um I love reading your reviews I'm so thankful for all the support that you all have given me and this show and it's just really great to see the kind words so feel free to leave a review or if you're on a platform that allows you to rate us please rate us If you have any questions, topics, guests that you'd like for me to interview, feel free to shoot me an email at hello at flowupgirl.com. Also, you can head over to Instagram and send a DM. We are at flowupgirl. And lastly, sharing is caring. So if there's someone in your 
community, your family, your friend network, your, your co-workers that you think would benefit from hearing any of the guests on this podcast, feel free to share these episodes, tag us on social media if you're sharing the clips, sharing is caring after all. All right, so I'm going to go. <laughs> it, it's been great being with you all today. I want to thank you again for all of the support. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to pop in and share this moment with me. So I will see you all again next week. Until then, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone.